Well, today we're joined by Natasha Benjamin, who suffered with crippling anxiety since she was a child, and she's here alongside the Speakmans, who will offer their expert opinion. Welcome, all Welcome. of you. So this is so this is paraphrasing some of what. Uh, Zane actually said, I flew into the UK last night to appear in my home country in front of my family, friends, most importantly my UK fans. Unfortunately, I'm anxiety that has haunted me through the last few months around live performances has gotten the better of me. Um, I've suffered the worst anxiety of my career, cannot apologise enough, but I want to be honest with everyone who has patiently waited to see me. I know those who suffer anxiety will understand, and I hope those who don't can empathise with my situation. And you do empathise with his situation. Absolutely. Um, when I read, read his story, I completely understood where he was coming from. Um, I know people might say he's performed before, you know, he, you know, what's wrong with him, he could do it again, yeah. but anxiety will tell you every time that you can't do it again, so I completely and, understand. And it comes and goes. I mean, it's yes. not just something that's with you always. There might be something that triggers yes. an episode and then you get really bad for a bit and you have to learn to deal with it. What, what started it originally? Um, for me, it was a, a troubled childhood. Yeah. yeah. And, so, and so, and from that moment then throughout your life, you've had these episodes. And what does it feel like? What happened? Oh, um, it's it's a feeling of um, like impending danger, um, a fear. Um, the worst part about it is you don't always know when it's going to come, so it can just arrive and you feel a sense of um, your ch your chest can get tight. You worry. You, sometimes you can um, shake. Um, you just have a, a real sense of something's going to happen and you don't sometimes you don't know what it what it is you said um, you said you worry about worrying and you worry about nothing and you worry about everything yeah. you so, so your life is constantly this sort of circle of worrying yeah it can be um, I've, I've, I've found myself in times where things are really good and I'm um, you know enjoying life and then I, I'll stop and think wait things are too good right now what's gonna happen what's gonna happen and for your job I mean you you work for a social enterprise helping children you have to stand up and do lots of speeches yeah. you're here on live telly now with us I mean you are throwing yourself into these situations is that part of the coping mechanism sometimes I mean um, coming here today was a challenge but I must admit um, there's, there's been a time where I stopped doing um, presentations and public speaking because I, I just couldn't cope with the build-up of anxiety that came every time and I thought I need to choose between my, my health and, um, and doing things like this and I chose my health. Yeah. So what are your triggers? Oh, um, sometimes it can be nothing. It's that sense of everything's OK, what's going to happen. Um, other times it can be... Um, it can be a stressful um, situation, uh, maybe a bit of bad news. Um, Even the postman. Yeah, there was a time in my um, life where the, um, I'd worry about getting bad letters, um, or even not even bad letters. I just think they would they would be bad. So you did go to the doctor at one point, yeah. and he suggested medication, which I think you tried, but you just it wasn't for you. you didn't feel in control of your own life, so you looked for other areas that you could try yeah. um, cognitive behavioural therapy. You've been having for a long time, but also mindfulness and. Relaxation is something that's worked for you. Yeah, I, I, I do a number of things. So I do mindfulness, I do meditation. Um, I like to try. I like to kind of um, distract my thoughts with music. Um, I do. I do a number of things to try and um, distract my myself from my own thoughts. Yeah. yeah. Do you find that people are sympathetic? I tweeted my support of. Zane yesterday and it was an interesting timeline underneath a lot of people saying you know god how awful hope he's okay but there were a, a sizable amount of people who said oh it's just an excuse you know if you've got that amount of money then uh, then surely you can overcome this you know get out on stage people have bought the tickets all of that sort of unsupportive tweeting um, does that surprise you um, fortunately not um, because it, it, it can happen to anybody um, people don't you know, money has nothing to do with it. Anxiety yeah. doesn't care what sort of lifestyle you live, how much money you have. Um, it, it's, it's, it, you know, it's a voice in your mind. It's something that tells you that something bad's going to happen, and it doesn't matter who you are. Yeah, or what who you, do. you are, and what you have. So, so, what is it, and why is it becoming more? Why, why are we saying that now? More and more people are living with it. Well, it's interesting that the thing about anxiety is that all of us in some time in our life will suffer anxiety so it's a perfect uh, normal bodily function however um, what actually happens when um, we feel anxious or stressed 
we have stress hormones that are released into our bloodstream and, and these stress hormones kind of make our heartbeat, make, uh, help make us hyperventilate, etc. And it, it's because of the fight or flight mechanism. And um, I think really what, what's actually happening now is that more people are, are feeling able to talk about it, which is great that, that Zane was so honest yesterday. Uh, I think that people are now able to talk about it more, more openly. I do think that there is a lot about comparison mm. in, in the world, particularly with young people, because studies suggest that under 35s, for example, and particularly uh, women, suffer more. Is it because we are now digitally connected to each other and yes. not socially connected to v each other? Very much so. And, and also, we, we, it's easy to make a comparison. Um, you know, and, and that has made it worse. But listen to Natasha, and we were saying about the, the triggers. She said that she had a turbulent childhood. And one thing that she, you know, reading between the lines there, you had a lot of uncertainty in childhood, didn't yeah. you? Uh, and when you create a learning that life's uncertain, then you're always on edge. You're always going to feel anxious because basically what you're saying is you never know what's going to happen next. Absolutely. And that's literally how I grew up, not knowing what was going to happen next. And that, that is part of why I do have anxiety. Is it great? Does Sorry. your d digital connection to the world through your phone or a tablet, does that affect you? Absolutely. Um, I have moments where I'm just like, I want, I want to come off social media completely. Um, my friends will vouch for that. Um, and I tend to, um, if I'm having a really anxious time, I will um, switch off from social media, even TV, and just um, lie down and have, have a moment of calm away so from So there me. are things you can do, aren't there?